we've come to the Windy Whirl to show you one of the simplest and most powerful tools of complexity. We're hoping to show something called the Stacy Diagram. Stacy Diagram was developed by Professor Ralph Stacy in the 1990s and has applications that is used throughout the world. Right now, what I'd like to do is try to demonstrate that diagram and its usefulness to policymaking in the current period. This is the Stacy Diagram. All Ralph Stacy did, and it was absolutely brilliant, was combine two axes. One, an axis of agreement and an axis of certainty. The axis of agreement is political agreement. Political in the sense of if you have a decision or a problem or a policy area that you're dealing with, you either have high level of agreement, everybody agrees on, this, on the problem or the policy, they want it done, no problem, no difficulty, or low level of agreement. Nobody agrees, everybody wants different things, everybody wants to do different strategies. So you have one axis of agreement. On the other axis he said, right, what is the degree of certainty, the certainty that we know on the policy area? This is where your experts have high degree of certainty. Everybody knows what the problem is, they know how to deal with it, and they're strongly certain of how to solve whatever the problem is in the policy. On this axis, you go from high certainty to low certainty. The experts disagree. Multiple ways of answering the question, multiple ways of dealing with the problem. When there's high certainty, they know how to deal with it. When it's low certainty, they don't. Now, just using these two simple axes, you wind up with a zone, let's call it the zone of order, or evidence-based policy making, where everybody agrees what the problem is, and the experts know how to solve the problem. Whole variety of areas where this can be done, but this is the zone of traditional evidence-based policy making, where audits and targets work. This is the home of traditional policy making. Let's assume the experts know what the problem is and they know how to solve it, but different actors want different things. Here we begin to move into areas of disagreement. Here we begin to start talking about areas of political decision making. Different groups have to be brought together to discuss it, bargains have to be made, agreements have to be made between different groups. Experts know how to solve the problem. The policy isn't confusing, it's just different groups want different things. Really here, we're talking about political decision making. Over here, everybody agrees. No problem, we know the solution we want. We know the direction where we go to, we know the policies that are there. Problem is, we don't know how to get there experts become less and less certain as to what strategies should be take to solve the problem. At best, you have judgmental decision making, where experts are trying to find a consensus. The difficult area combines both high uncertainty and low degrees of agreement. You wind up with what could be called the area or the zone of disorder or chaos. Let's say if we move into a zone where actors don't agree, different groups want different things, and in fact they want to do uh, different strategies to solve the policy problem. And in essence, the best you can do, it's as if you're walking through a maze where the walls of the maze are changing with every step you take. Here, incremental decision making, small strategies, constant adjusting is the best you can possibly do. Now the interesting thing is, what about this big area between all of this? All this area here is basically a zone of complexity. Political decisions, experts disagreeing, trying to find a consensus, trying to manage the problem, mixing different strategies. The key thing that the Stacy Diagram demonstrates is that with normal policy problems, 
Actually, you have a whole variety of strategies to choose from. The fundamental problem for our current policy strategy, our Westminster model, is that everything is supposed to come here. This is the golden zone of policy. And what it constantly demands is that we should drag all of our other decisions and put them into here. And that somehow all of these should be dealt with in this particular zone with evidence-based strategies, with targets, audits, etc. That winds up crushing all the variety and the real decision-making that's made on an everyday basis. In conclusion, what the Stacy diagram gives us is a more realistic picture of the normal, complex decision-making that goes on within any policy field. This more realistic approach enables us to see the orderly, complex, and disorderly strategies and processes that make up all normal policy decision-making. Key thing about this is that once we recognize this, it enables us to move away from a one-size-fits-all evidence-based order orientation and strategy which is forced on us by the normal traditional UK policy perspective.